Good afternoon, CBTU. Good afternoon. Let me give a shout out to our host city, Chicago, and the host chapter, the Chicago chapter of CBTU, led by the great Bob Simpson, one of the pillars of our organization that has been here from the beginning. Before I begin my report, I want to say a few words about how special this city is to CBTU's history. It is our birthplace, as many of you know, the place where a new, independent, bodacious organization sprung into life some 44 years ago to speak for millions of black workers in unions across America. Chicago will always be the mecca we return to, to refocus on our founding mission. Bill Lucy, I can hear the booming voice of the late, great Charlie Hayes calling to order the first historic conference at the LaSalle Hotel. I need to take a moment, though, to recall two CBTU champions, Vernon Watkins and Carol Anderson. The memories are so vivid and the law still so fresh. When I think about Vernon and Carol, two key behind-the-scenes members of our CBTU family. Both Carol and Vernon, they touched so many lives in the movement and beyond. They are truly irreplaceable. They will be missed but never forgotten. I just want to take a moment of silence for Carol and Vernon and all the other brothers and sisters that were here around last year, but are not here with us in person today. Could we just have a moment of silence? And when I look at what happened in Ferguson, and then I look at what happened in Baltimore, I see where the, the, the state's attorney came out, and this ain't in my remarks, but the state attorney in Baltimore came out and she said, look, I'm bringing all of them up on charges. I'm not calling nobody together. I'm not asking for no special jury to come in. I, I looked at the evidence. They had no right to arrest them in the first place. So everything they did after that was wrong. And, and if you got a problem with it, I'll see you in court. Now, that's basically what she said. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, but that's basically what she said. Now, look at what's the difference between Ferguson, New York City, and Baltimore. It wasn't a young sister calling the shots. But the best part about it is, this ain't about white cops and black folks. If I, if I recall, there was three white cops and three black cops. And the young sister said, I don't care what color you is, wrong is wrong, y'all killed them, and you're gonna pay for it. We got to get more young folks that's willing to stand up and do what's just and what's right and not worry about the politics behind the decisions that they're making. While one in every 106 white males, 18 and older, is incarcerated, one in 15, I said one in 15, I, I mean one in 15 black males over 18 are locked up somewhere on any given day. That's somebody's son, that's, that's somebody's father, that's somebody's uncle, that's somebody's boyfriend, that is somebody's husband. The sad truth is there's always a cage waiting for the next black body. I'm sure some of you have been touched in some way by the lock em up mentality created by the failed war on drugs. The only winner is the prison industry complex that rakes in at least $15 billion a year. $15 billion a year in profits off of us for selling a little weed. Something wrong with that picture. 
from Ferguson to Baltimore to the shanty towns on the outskirts of Paris. The flames of resistance are burning and getting stronger. People are just sick and tired, as Fannie Lou said, of being sick and tired. Just sick and tired of being taken advantage of, sick and tired of being abused and misused, sick and tired of being cast away. People are speaking up, rising up, marching for fundamental change. Mothers are dragging their children, their sons away from mischief to save their lives. And I wish, as somebody said, we ought to just send the mothers in. Because some of these mothers, y'all know, y'all in the audience, can clear up some problems around this country and around this world. Just send the mama in and grab that boy and slap him upside his head. Every time I turn around, I see folks talking about child brutality and you ain't supposed to slap your children, you ain't supposed to whip your children. Well, everybody was jumping for joy when she was out here whooping his behind. She, black folks, white folks, brown folks, yellow folks, Republicans, Democrats, get them! And, and speaking of Congress, I, I want to give a well-deserved shout out to the members who voted to protect American workers from unfair trade deals negotiated in secret. Give them a hand. There's a few of them that stood up for us. There's a few of them that did the right thing. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I love my president. I, I admire his patience. I respect his desire to have fast-track authority to get his signature trade deal. But, 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 y'all know we all got them cousins who go a little crazy from time to time. Well, my cousin Barry has blown his cool on this one. He kind of lost his mind on this one. I, I'm with him like 99% of the time, but this one, I, I, I don't know who he's talking to. I, I, I don't know who he's getting his counsel from, but he done just really messed up. How in the hell can he go along with something that the entire late, I mean, there ain't one union, every now and then you can get one union to break away. There ain't one union that's telling anybody that this is a good deal. There ain't one person that's lost their job that's saying this is a good thing. There ain't one person that thinks fast track is a good thing because they ain't not one of us want to lose one or more of our jobs overseas to this fast track. How can he think it's the right thing? We can't keep shipping American jobs to foreign companies without protecting the very workers who built those companies. That's why we're all in to block TPP. To win, we need all of you to join in. Can I count on you? Can I count on you? Can I count on you to call your congressman? Can I count on you to give your senator hell? Can I count on you to let them know that we're going to stand against fast track? Finally, finally, we must correctly grasp this moment, this earthquake of resistance spreading across America and across the world. For too long, we dropped our guard and didn't stand our ground. That's how we lost pensions. That's how we lost affirmative action and even Congress. Well, I'm tired of backpedaling and being polite to folks who despise my color or my politics. At this CBTU convention, we declare no more stepping back before stepping forward. Not one step back before stepping forward. No more looking the other way when our elected friends betray us over and over and over again. I think we got to start holding these politicians accountable. If they turn their back on us, we better damn well turn our back on them when it's election time. So as I close, I need to ask you something. Will you join me in owning our future? Will you join me in owning our community? Will you join me in making our community better? 
when you join me in changing our movement to be a more progressive movement that ain't going to take no, excuse me, Reverend, shit from nobody, or will you join me in making a change in this labor movement that we have in this country? Will you join me in standing up at your local level? Will you join me in making a change at your national level? Will you join me in letting labor know that CBTU is going to be the lead organization that's going to change the way we do business. Make sure that this country lives up to its creed. It said we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. We are all men. We are part of this country. Stand with me and don't educate, don't incarcerate, educate. Will you join me? Will we make a difference? Will CBTU be the change agent? Remember, weeping may endure it for a night, but joy coming in the morning. And I'm looking out to the east, and I see the sun coming up. It's almost morning time, CBTU. It's almost morning time. It's time for us to shine. God bless you.